A couple of weeks ago, I tried using the latest Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig model as my main computer for a day, and I posted a video about my experience. Besides many diehard Linux fans complaining in the comments about my apparent idiocy caused by being a Mac user, the experience taught me one thing. There are a lot of things that still aren't built for 64-bit ARM processors, or e even for Linux in general. But there's a really good trend that I'm seeing. Most of the open source software I use already works great on a Pi 4 running on its 64-bit ARM processor. In my testing, I used the latest 64-bit Pi OS beta, and I think the Pi Foundation had excellent timing releasing it this year, since many more applications can run on a 64-bit architecture nowadays, and because the newest Pi 4 models have much more RAM to take advantage of the better architecture. I could run the LAMP stack, Docker, Kubernetes, GitLab, Drupal, WordPress, Minecraft, and almost all the Docker images I normally run on my Mac and in production clusters. For some things, I had to recompile or build my own Docker image, but most things are actually already built for ARM64, and I noticed I didn't have to spend as much time this time around compiling things for myself. Earlier this week, Apple announced Apple Silicon, which is marketing speak for Apple's ditching Intel x86 CPUs and will run on 64-bit ARM processors just like the Pi. And they dedicated a whole 17 seconds of the WWDC keynote highlighting, and I quote, new virtualization technologies on the Mac. We're also introducing new virtualization technologies in Mac OS Big Sur. So for developers who want to run other environments like Linux or tools like Docker, we have you covered. What does this mean for the Pi and cheap single board computers like it? I think that this is great news. And listening to a podcast interview with Craig Federighi, there was even more interesting news. Now, the virtualization when you are running on ARM is still running uh, a uh, ARM-based version of Linux. So you could you could build you could build your your container uh, for ARM, uh, test it locally on your uh, Mac. Uh, if depending on what cloud you're using, you know Amazon increasingly has ARM-based. Uh, deployments in the cloud. So you could deploy your container in the cloud as ARM. Craig mentioned that the virtualization on the new Macs won't support x86 at all. He even explicitly called out Docker containers being built for ARM and being able to run them on ARM instances in AWS. I'm not going to discuss the lack of Windows support or boot camp on the new Mac since that's only tangentially related, but I do think that there's one very positive implication. As Apple moves off the x86 platform to 64-bit ARM, more and more organizations and developers will see the importance of building multi-arch Docker images and also making sure their software compiles on ARM processors like the ones in the Raspberry Pi. Like I said earlier, there's already some good momentum in that area. But what I think is going to happen is that momentum will start turning into a full-on freight train, and we're going to see that the default for most software becomes it runs on ARM and x86 instead of the current status quo, which is it runs on x86 and it might run on ARM, but it's not really supported that way. Even if many developers like me decide to jump off Apple's platform after macOS 11 is released, there's enough momentum in the Apple ecosystem, and I think in the computing world in general, to really push the ARM transition forward this year. I feel like Apple's announcement at WWDC echoes earlier major changes like dropping floppy drive support in the first iMac, or adopting USB when most of the industry still used serial ports, or abandoning Adobe Flash before it was the cool thing to do. Microsoft has been trying to diversify into the ARM ecosystem for a while, but their Windows app support for ARM has been lackluster, since they never really forced dev developers to support it, or they haven't even come up with a solid transition plan. Maybe with Apple's announcement this week, the small amount of momentum ARM has had during the 2010s will turn into a landslide, and we'll see the architecture duke it out with the x86 for the next decade, especially because of how important mobile, power efficient, and edge computing devices are today. Thanks for watching, and please consider subscribing. The next Turing Pi Cluster episode is coming soon, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.